This is the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Real talk about the voiceover industry with your hosts, Linda Bruno and J.J. Wilson. Welcome back. This is the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. I'm your hostess with the mostess, Linda Bruno, with my trusty sidekick, J.J. Wilson. Ow! Ow! You just kicked me in the side. (laughs) And we're very excited because on this episode, we were able to be guests on the Middle Class VO podcast with That's right, Bobby we were. Maxwell. We're very important, Linda. That's why. We are. I know. Yes. And Kevin Kilpatrick. And they have, um, thankfully, joined us today. So say hi, guys. See? It's hey. so very exciting. It's so very exciting <laughs> to be on somebody else's podcast. Thanks for having right? us. Right? Yeah. Oh, we love we loved well, being on yours. We're like besties yes. now, yeah, aren't we? it was we? really fun. <laughs> I know. We're <laughs> podcast besties. It was really fun. And we have over three listeners, so it's going to get around. <laughs> Well, JJ, you keep working hard at it, and you'll be up to tens and tens like we are. <laughs> I will, but I won't wear my face mask. Okay. I think yeah. it's a, a, a cool, because we were talking about podcasts, that maybe we should discuss yours. And you, you tell the audience what you guys are doing. You guys do it weekly? Uh, we do uh, about a, two a month, uh, I think, is our average. Um, and we just, just like hit, us. Yeah. yeah, we just hit, uh, I think we just hit 10,000 downloads, which we're, you know, very excited. It doesn't seem like a whole lot. But, you know, no, our, our you little celebrate. fledgling podcast, we're so excited. Thanks for the check, Kevin. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Residual's coming your way, It's an buddy. awful lot of clicking, but it's worth it for me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Sorry. That, that explains why your index finger is so muscular looking. 8,234. <laughs> you know what, JJ? I thought you said uh, a lot of licking on your part. Licking. I oh, no. no. That kind I get of a new show. hard drive. That's not COVID safe now. <laughs> no, it's not. So you guys do it like uh, bi-monthly? Yeah, we, we uh, well, you know, a couple times a month and uh, we just, we talk about our perspective and where we are in the VO world. You know, Bobby and I, you know, we come from radio. We we work a lot in the VO trenches, as it were, you know, doing a lot of corporate explainer, mm. e-learning, uh, you know, radio imaging, a lot of car commercials and the meat and potatoes of the voice of a world. But we, we still dip our toe into national work and... Uh, you know, yeah. are always striving for more, right, Bobby? Oh, absolutely. Have some really good guests from all different genres, though. We just we just have fun. We let it, you know, flow as it does. Yeah, you guys have guests on your show, which is really nice. We we don't do that, do we, JJ? No. You have us. We should. <laughs> well, we do now. I know you're our first. You're. Our, I mean, I used to pair up. It would depend. This was back when JJ had his heart attack and was <clears throat> not available. Um, so I would get random friends to do the podcast with me. So I guess they're kind of like they were guests. Yeah. And now it's just JJ and me. <laughs> but we're so happy that you're with us. This is fantastic. Yeah, we're yes. happy to be on. Yes, absolutely. So the middle class absolutely. VO podcast, it's referring to the fact that you say you're right in the trench you're right in the trenches, you're right in the middle of the whole, you know, industry. Yeah, it, it's like, you know, the stuff that you hear every day but doesn't necessarily get the glamour of the national, you know, Geico right. ads yeah. or stuff like that. But it's stuff that, that keeps yeah. the lights on and oh, you yeah. know, car payments made yep. and stuff that is attainable for most folks that, you know, want to dip their toe into this industry. Yeah, especially without the having to movie. move to New York City or L.A. Mm-hmm. and do that kind of circuit. I call myself the, the kind of the same thing. I'm I'm in the middle. I get to work from home and I don't have to deal with all the, you know, visiting the agents and all that stuff. And I tried that for a minute and it was it was a, a complete rat race. It is. And uh, it is. this is hard enough. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. This, where we all are is is super competitive as it is. And oh, yes. yeah, you know, not, not to say that we don't have the wherewithal to compete with others. But, um, you know, right here, I, I like where I am. I really do. Me, too. Me too. Me three. You're happy. You're content. Me too. You're, yeah. you're happy too, Bobby? I'm happy. That's good. And I'm <laughs> She's happy. happy. <laughs> I, I know because being in New York since 97, yes, it is a complete rat race. I was thrilled to buy a house on Long Island yeah. and get away from it, you know, because of the visitings and the walking to the castings and seeing this one and that one. And, and COVID was actually a little bit of a blessing because it forced some of the casting directors to go online. Mm-hmm. And they Changed had never ways. done that before. And it was crazy because they were like dinosaurs in New York City. Wow. And they would look at me and go, you have a studio? What's that like? 
Um, and my agents Are you were from like, the future? <laughs> seriously, seriously. My New York City agents were like, can we talk to you about what you're doing? You've got your own clients. I'm like, yeah, you know, and um, it's crazy. They, I'm serious. I swear to you, they had no idea about this world, which is the majority of the work now. <laughs> so were you like so, going into the city like every day between your seeing your agents and, and, and auditions? Well, I lived in the city for a couple of years. Okay. Um, so when I first moved up, I was on Long Island because I worked in radio as well, like you guys. And um, then I moved into the city and was in Chelsea for a couple of years because a lot of the casting directors are in that area. Uh. And I always, like, it was a dream to go and experience it, you know, and, and do it and pound the pav- pavement, literally. Um, but then it gets, it gets old. Yeah, you that's know? the romantic point of view of it, right, Linda? You know, oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. going in for a casting and right. all this. And, and But in reality, it becomes a pain in the ass. Yeah, it really It is. really does, and especially then, if you don't live there. Because 20 right. years ago, I tried that circuit. And what I did, I wanted to see if it would work for me. And I wanted to live in Westchester, which is where I used to live. And so I stayed at a friend's house. I got on the train every morning run into the city, mm-hmm. I got a mm-hmm. croissant and a bagel, and then I just, I had no place to go. You wait around. So I walked the streets of New York City eight hours a day, and it went very well, but I just realized, no, I don't, I don't, know. And <laughs> a, a quick funny story, if I may? <laughs> of course, JJ. Um, um, I, uh, I, my first audition in New York with the, with the big agent, and I walk into the room, and there's three three men sitting across from me, and I sit down, they hand us all the scripts, and the man across from me looks at me and goes, hmm, I haven't seen you before. Uh, what's your name? And I said, well, I'm, I'm J.J. Wilson. He goes, oh, are you Biggie's son? And I went, <laughs> wow. yes. And I, I started to recognize his voice, and I went, and are you Peter Thomas? Shut up. And he said, yes, I am. He oh, said, your dad and I ride the train together. Up. So I, I handed him my script, and I left. <laughs> Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who, who wouldn't? Who, who's going to try to compete you with him? You win. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I fold. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I had a pair of twos. <laughs> but JJ, being in Westchester was what, like a 40-minute train ride or... Uh, yeah, long? 45, 50 minutes. But, you know, you had to drive from your house to the parking lot for the train. And it took 45 minutes to walk from the parking spot to the train. I have, and then you had to yeah. get on the train and then walk. And then I didn't know where to go. I sat. There's no place to sit in New York City. Everything is sharp. For for an audition, <laughs> pre, pre-COVID, pre I would calculate it. It would take me four hours round trip to yeah. go really? in. Really? Yeah. And that's for yeah. an audition. So, you know. It's, it's be one thing if it was a session, and it got to that point where I was like, you're taking out half of a, right in the middle of the workday here, whereas voice talent who have the studios, we, we, you know, we make money quickly. And it, it was really, it's tough. It's tough. So COVID yeah. changed that. That's probably one of the only, only benefits of It was of that it. way for me with uh, the on-camera. I used to, many, many years ago, I used to do a lot of on-camera. Mm, and mm-hmm. as I started to get more popular in voiceovers, I realized I'm standing here on the set sitting in this cold, icky trailer. And people are beeping me and going, are you going to do a VO to make twice what you're making today? <laughs> and I went, no, I'm on the set. So I finally edged back into voiceovers, and that's pretty much all I did. <laughs> the smart choice yeah. as voice Yes, talent. and Michael, Michael Bay's an idiot anyway. Oh. So I'm sorry. Did I just say that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. He's so kind to, to the talent on You'll the set. You'll never work in this town again. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, I want to, um, Bobby, tell us a little bit about what you have done. Where are you from? You're living in Ohio now. Is that where you are? Yeah, Cincinnati. I've pretty much lived here all my life except for a couple of years in um, Las Vegas. Love your demo, by the way. Well, thank yeah. you. The, the commercial demo. Yes. I, ju- Love I just had my Love commercial it, yes. demo redone, actually. And I haven't Very posted nice. it up yet. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate that. But like, I really like your sultry read. It's fantastic. Oh, thank so you. So do I. I listen to it a lot at night. <laughs> <laughs> Sicko. My wife keeps going, why are you listening to that again? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, Bobby. Yes, sorry. <laughs> we digress. <Something> here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm better now. But yeah, like like Kev said, we're we're both from radio, so I did that for decades and decades, and and really started enjoying the production side of radio more than the on air side, and and just decided <laughs> to do this full time. And I was amazed at how well that first year went. But 
I was doing a lot of pay to play work then, and and then okay. eventually got agents and and started some marketing and and um, you know just started to pick up from there. Yeah, that's cool. And what about you, Kevin? How'd you how'd you start out? Well, I started out in radio in high school um, and did that for 18 years. And it was around uh, early 2000s. I started doing car spots on the side. Uh, I think a co-worker, mm. you know, I was on air down in Miami. And JJ can attest that the automotive VO scene in Miami was hot. And I think, you know. I, <laughs> oh, it was. When were you down there? Wait a minute. Hold it. When were you in Miami? <laughs> I was there from 95 to 05. Okay, yeah, that would be just after my time. Yeah, and so so I, yeah. I learned okay. my sound uh, for automotive. You know, I, I started doing it on the side, and I was like, you know, I, I didn't think. I was just like radio boy, and that's all I knew was making radio commercials. <laughs> and then I started gleaning, <laughs> you know, nuggets from people that were doing it, like uh, Rob Walker, Rick Sheffield, uh Tom Overton, Jack Gale. Overtones. Yeah. Overtones. Yeah. And all these guys. <laughs> Jack Bob Gale. Tracy. And I... Bob Tracy. Bob Tracy. JJ, how are you? It's Bob Tracy. <laughs> I'm fine. Yes, good to talk to you. I'm fine. I would always go... But you're, you're naming all the biggies. Those are the people I learned from as well. Yeah, well, these are the guys that... I started doing this automotive <laughs> stuff on the side when I was in radio, and I, I had to... I knew who all these guys were because I I spent a hot minute, about seven months, at a production studio down there before I got back into radio. Um, But we were producing auto ads, and I wasn't reading them at the time. This was in 1994. I was hired to be production director for this ad agency down there, and I wasn't good enough to read car spots at that time. They hmm. would, you know, and so I, you know, just I was like, I was upset because I couldn't do it. I'm like, yeah. I've been doing this a long time, y'all. And, but it was just <laughs> that's it was how it different. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. But you know, long story, a little bit longer. Uh, towards the early 2000s, started doing uh, car spots on the side. Started seeing the writing on the wall, how radio was going. I was seeing legendary radio yeah. personalities around me lose their jobs in yes. while in their mid 50s. And I'm like, they're not yep. going to be able to find another gig unless they move to Ottumwa, Iowa, you know, or something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. so I didn't want to be that guy. So I amped up my car spots on the side. And then one day I was like, I'm tired of going to car dealerships on the weekend and spinning the prize wheel. I'm tired of going to honky tonks, giving out T-shirts. I'm going to make my own path. And so that's what I did. Oh, I forgot about <laughs> prize wheel spinning. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. And all the pizza that so the my father would eat. <laughs> Yes. yes, my father. Exactly. <laughs> my father at WIOD, mm-hmm. and and uh, uh, Bill Calder, Mike Ranieri, had been doing promos for weeks, and we were all building sailboats for the lakes of Acadia uh-huh. in Miami. Uh-huh. Yes, and so we all actually built radio-controlled model sailboats. Wow! You know, we took a month and built them. I think I was fifteen, maybe sixteen. And we finally get there for the event. It's live, you know, broadcast live. And it's not a lake. It's a frickin' pond, and it's six inches deep. <laughs> so I spent all day getting everybody's sailboats out of the muck. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's no fun. Oh, the remotes. I used to love those. I used to love the remotes. Yeah. Well, oh, that, that was one but of the... But, yeah, I know. Radio, radio changed. Radio changed. I remember my father came home one day. I never went back. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a tough business yeah. to be in right it now. Is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed the live performing part of radio. I I, thorough, I love doing a live show, just like what we're doing right now. I love this. Right. I yep. do. Yep. And it, it was just the, all the extra stuff that went with it and the uncertainty of the future. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is the station yeah. going to change formats? Is everybody yeah. going to get fired? <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you guys. But a constant well, concern. Don't, don't you yeah, have a lot of you friends from that all are... those people? That is really interesting. Yeah, you know, Rick Sheffield, what a guy. And, and, and Linda, you, Linda, you probably know Rick Sheffield, right? Yeah, I okay. do. I do. And Bobby, you would know his voice. He, he's a legend. He. Oh, you. Yeah. He, was, he, uh, was the, he was the voice of the Call Now Nash. guy. Yeah. He, <laughs> Bobby, he does. He invented the read. Yeah, he invented that read. But wait, wow. there's more. Oh, really? You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he was the voice of National Enquirer for years. Uh, he does. So was I. All the well, well, there we go. <laughs> See, and, 
And then he does... Reach for a star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was me. He, yeah. And he was the voice of Culligan for a long time, way back in the day. So. Oh, wow. And anyway, so Rick Sheffield, he taught me, you know, just some nuggets. You know, just like he told me one time, this is before I was even doing it. He was like, the more you work, the more you'll work. I'm like, uh, what does that mean? Oh. And then it was later I found out what he meant. So, yeah. so true. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. So, uh, you know, since we're all in this big boat of voiceover industry, I want to know from you guys, how do you guys handle, you know, we're all going through such a tough, it's tough. If you don't book jobs, you audition a gajillion times. How do you guys handle that? I've told you a million times not to exaggerate, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> Slight exaggeration. It feels like it. But how Hyperbole do you guys much? handle it? <laughs> Watch your language. <laughs> this is a clean podcast. No, it ain't. <laughs> Not with JJ. <laughs> Not with me here. Oh, no. Wait, I'm listening to Bobby's uh, demo. Hang on. There he goes again. I'll call you later, okay? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, the pressure, you know, the constant pressure. Oh, How do awful. you guys deal with it? Bobby. Oh, good. <laughs> Hello. That's how we deal with it, too. <laughs> I call Linda and bitch to her, and then she does the same to me. <laughs> You know, I was really lucky through this whole past year that I, I stayed busy. I think it was because of of some jobs that I got that were like um, there was a, a crime series that they did 10 episodes. So that kept me really busy. I did a lot oh, nice. of um, COVID messages. So mm, oh, God, I yes. really can't yes. complain that it was a, a down year, you know, knock on wood or right. fiberglass or whatever this is. But um, <laughs> it, it, I'm I'm fortunate. I stay busy. That's great. That's great. What about you, Kevin? The government. The government. <laughs> the kept government you busy? helped me get through. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, as, doing what I do um, as a sole proprietor, I still have you know quote unquote employees, and so I was able to you know thankfully I was able to get some assistance. But that notwithstanding, you know things would have been fine. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I did take a hit uh, because automotive yeah, with, is a with big, the cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah spot. I did too. Yeah. I did too. Uh, yeah. Automotive is probably you know fifty sixty percent of what I do, and then yes. that yeah. took a fifty to sixty percent. Yes, it did, didn't so it? So when you yeah. do the math, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I kept myself busy with. Um, I amped up my auditions. Uh, I amped up my uh, social media presence. Um, I found ways to. Get, you know, stay busy. I produced a couple yeah. of demos. I did some coaching sessions and that kind of stuff that, you know, I normally would not seek. Um, right. Because I, I, I want to perform with my voice. That's what I want to do. And uh, but, you know, I've got I've got a guy, Jason, that works with me um, who helps me produce stuff. And, you know, we do that. But that kept me busy. And thankfully, you know, last quarter uh, of 2020, it started picking up, you know, almost back <coughs> to normal. And here we are in 2021 and things are looking pretty rosy, thankfully. That's awesome. I did the same thing, too. I got because I have uh, an employee um, and do run payroll and all that. So I, I took advantage of that last year. I was just in the process of filling out my forgiveness, <laughs> my PPP forgiveness you uh, see? Yeah, you know what I'm paperwork. About. Yeah, I mean, but advantage? I did take a hit. Yeah, I, my business went down about 25%, I would say, last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. You know what so, I found really hard was doing taxes, the, uh, the write-offs. It's like, thank goodness I did a lot of um, workshops and webinars because it, the conferences were gone. You know, it's like all oh, the, right. those nice, chunky write-offs were <laughs> not there. Yeah, I'm sure JJ's wondering what not, right now, what are taxes? <laughs> <laughs> JJ's hey, very I quiet. Did, I, I deducted the dog bark collar. Okay. <laughs> I said without it I couldn't work. <laughs> My accountant went, no, I don't think so. And cigarettes are not deductible. <laughs> but they help no, my they're voice. not. They help my voice they, sound they really do. cool. They do. <laughs> Linda doesn't believe me, but they do. No, no, no. Goes against everything I believe in. Yes, I'm I was reading in a train too, JJ. Right? Yeah, I know. And he's the one person that can drink Coca Cola and you know smoke cigarettes and sound fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> really? I warm up every day. <sighs> okay, I'm ready for the session. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish my Velveeta. Okay, oh, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> wow, Parker. Oh, could, could I could I break the mood for just a minute? Okay, Kevin. JJ, I got to get you back. 
Oh, I sent you an email. Oh, no, you it's didn't. a cold read. No, you did. It's a cold read. <laughs> no, you did. Okay. I love it. And Here I we want go. you to read. I want you to read the specs out loud, and then I want you to go for it. And I wish you luck. I call BS. It's, it's a toughie. I call BS. <laughs> it's, it's, you did it's send a toughie. me something. It's a toughie. Wait, well, wait. Linda was about to ask me something. Were you about to ask I, me something, Linda? I was. She was going to ask you to do the cold read. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was going to say, I, I noticed on your website, it says that you're the narrator for a Bible app for kids. It has over 20 million downloads. Yeah, that's that's something I'm pretty wow. proud of. That's uh, I did that. That's incredible. Yeah, I think wow. it's around 2013 or 14. And I didn't, you know, you never know. Uh, it's going to blow right. up like that. And, you know, it was a buyout rate. And the buyout rate was solid. Uh, I just, I, I've told Bobby this in the past. I wish I'd figured out a way to negotiate a per download rate or something like that. <laughs> yes, I was just going to say. <laughs> Even if it was a penny. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I told Bobby. I said, even a penny. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But it was, you well, know. That's right. I've gotten there. residual checks for two pennies. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so read the, uh, oh, read the specs oh, out loud and then me? go right into the copy. Oh, now, for those of you listeners that have not listened to the Middle Class VO podcast, um, you might not be familiar, but Kevin put JJ on the spot, wrote this fantastic script. he was going to be script. on the spot. I didn't know. But it was, oh, that's true. But, um, and JJ just, you know, hit it out of the park. By the way, Kevin, you're on the spot. <laughs> you're on the spot. <laughs> so uh, you're going right. to give it. So we just thought we'd have some fun. Yo, of course, it's, it's a of tough course. read. I, I get it. I, right, so, I am opening up the uh, Windows document right now. And, okay. uh, well, and the, thanks for the re- large read the font, specs. by the way. <laughs> oh, don't mention it. Just read the specs Jeez, out please. loud this so everybody new... can understand what we go through every day. Times right. New Roman 48. 48 on the <laughs> plot, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. All right, here we go. Specs. Rye with a touch of Bill Shatner on a rainy day. We look <laughs> looking for a tall sound, but not too short, just kind of medium in a tall sort of way. Friendly with a mean attitude. And, of course, say it fast with making it sound slow while making it sound slow. Thanks. <laughs> Don't worry. All right. All right. Go for it. Member FDIC. Oh, see? See? I told you this guy was good. That's it? That's That's it. it. (laughs) Wow. JJ, thank you for setting me up for success. I appreciate that. (laughs) I definitely that, that heard was, the Shatner-esque part. I did, yeah. too. Right? Yeah. Remember, FT, I, it, C. And a little bit of Shatner <laughs> anger in there, too, you know? Yeah. Yes, and you did sound tall during that read. I, I don't know what it is. I just, I felt like a little short of oxygen. Could I give you an alt? <laughs> yeah. A B. A B read. Just give, me, just give me three in a row on the C. Okay. That's all I need. Okay. C. Oh, that's the one. We're done. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'll all right, be looking for that the check. In. Edit that in. <laughs> yeah, you keep looking. <laughs> oh. That's great. Oh, well, good, good, good JJ. job, JJ. Thank you for uh, for that. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you didn't punish him since yours involved talking about donkeys. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. No. Well, he knows things about me you don't. Linda. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> well, I've read the transcripts anyway. <laughs> How did you two meet again? You were in the men's room at Denny's again, weren't you? (laughs) It's 2 (laughs) a.m. Where is he? Rough and ready, where are you? (laughs) I'm sorry, Bobby, what were you saying? (laughs) Let's just go start our own podcast, Linda. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) You know, the the comedy is, J.J. and I have never been face-to-face. We've only talked, you know, for probably hours on the phone. That's uh, crazy. I get my second podcast. shot in a week. After that, you're going to get sick of seeing me. <laughs> well, I hope so. I want, I want to yes. come out and see your uh, your wood shop and your studio, all of that. So I want to come out and okay. see you. Okay. All right. The blood on the floor and stuff <laughs> yeah, like that. Just wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a helmet. Wear yes. a helmet. <laughs> and this is the scene of the crime. <laughs> <laughs> JJ, are you oh, like boy. this it's called... in, in life all the time? I mean, yeah, pretty much. I'd yeah. love to talk to your wife. <laughs> <gasps> oh, yeah. God. Janine is a very patient and loving woman. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm JJ's, like, uh, online wife. <laughs> and, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I hope you don't talk in your sleep, too. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> I know. No. Poor lady. I want to hear Bobby's demo again. JJ always has um, a story or something's happened. You're very, he's always very animated. So it's always some crazy thing. And do you, do you feel that way, JJ? Do you realize yes. that? 
Yes, my mind works in very strange ways. <laughs> yeah. It's, there's never it just really a normal, does. boring day for JJ. No. <laughs> no what I've grown no. to know about JJ is he's, it, it, uh, the stories always involve a trip to the hospital. Right. Yes. Oh my! Yes. So I sliced off my Here's thumb that. the other day with a bandsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I just no, stitched it right back up. He had his his nose was all like uh, oh, God. swollen it, it last like, week, oh, and you awful. insisted on continuing with the voiceover the workout because I'm thinking, well, I don't miss. I know he doesn't. Cha 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 cha. He couldn't open his eyes, and he was all swollen and puffy. But other than that. <laughs> Wow. You did a great job, JJ. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and entertaining to say the least. So this oh, is awesome. So is what you just said. <laughs> is it? Oh, I have a quick question. Quick yes. question. Yes. Ken, I don't think JJ's going to know the answer to this. Um, Kevin and Bobby, what the heck is a six second commercial? It's probably uh, it digital, is... right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm saying like it's like the trend right now for demos. Like I heard oh. it on Bobby's website, oh, and yeah, I've yeah. heard it on other people's. What's what's up with that? There's there's because of the you know the goldfish uh, attention span mentality that we have. <laughs> I was just yeah. going to yeah. say yeah. they it's, can't it's, pay attention for all minutes. Commercials have gone that way, especially on YouTube pre-roll. Yeah, uh, they do a lot of six-second uh, you know stuff before you see your content. Oh, so I, I, okay. And so that's the advent of the six-second spot, and so. You know, there's demos being produced that reflect that. So I think J. Michael Collins might have started that trend. Um, yeah, and because I know a lot of people who had have had them produced by him, but yeah, yeah there's lots of six second and fifteen second work out there. You you wow. can even use a member of TIC on one. Yeah, there you right. go. You, you, you <laughs> say it slowly <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. Gotta keep up. Gotta keep up with these trends. All right, so the guy does bank spots. Okay, let's move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Your podcast. Oh my God, no! What? No. no. Well, Don't you, let it you, you, you have any more questions for the duo? No, this was. You didn't have any questions, JJ. I'm done. <laughs> I've just been listening and enjoying, and 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 it's it's been fun. I I, I will say that um, uh, uh, Kevin is a beast at 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 uh, at, at the car spots. <laughs> no, not a burden. It's Borden, and that's milk. Um, <laughs> What was I? A beast oh. with car spots? Oh, man. I, the first time I met Kevin and he didn't know it was on TV, and I heard this car spot and I heard this guy reading it, and I actually looked at Janina and I said, I really don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds too good. Yeah, he's really good, isn't he? And she said, yeah. You, and I said, get out. You know what Kevin is a beast so, at? Have you listened to his demo, his uh, documentary demo? Oh, uh, Bobby. No. Yes. Stop it. Y- yes. Stop. yes. 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 Incredible. First time I heard it, I was like... Dang. Yes. And oh, yes. I'm going to have to look that up. I yeah. wonder if yeah. Linda hears me because, Linda, I'm on in New York Metro every month, like ad nauseum. Oh, um, where? For, for the Hudson Group, Hudson Chrysler, Hudson Nissan, Hudson Toyota. Oh, and now I'll pay attention. Okay. Yeah. it's I've been doing those for, yeah, 10 plus years. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Th- but the thing is, is it doesn't sound like me like right now. They, mm-hmm. I go into mean, angry Kevin is what I call and <laughs> and, and JJ, that's the I kind of learned that sound from uh, Rick Sheffield and Bob Tracy. Uh, Rick Sheffield said, yes, you want you want to sound like an angry father. And that's what yep. he was telling me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yep. So, it's wow. Like on, the, you know, the hard sell, quote unquote, car spots. They're not necessarily yelling at the top of their lungs. There's some volume there, but it's more attitude. And it's like, yep. you're going to buy this car. Get it for one ninety nine a month. Do it now or we'll kill your family. <laughs> or the puppy gets it. Yeah. Um, I remember I was doing a car session and Robert Walker was engineering and uh-huh. he got up and he came in the booth and he took my right hand and he squished it into a fist and he said, now you're ready to do the car spot. Oh, he said, if you're not making a fist and punching the microphone, you're not doing it right. Didn't you always <laughs> say that Connie Zimmett would say if you're not spitting on the microphone, you're not doing it right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Spitting yeah. on it. Giving I have passion. to clean my uh, center uh, uh, monitor at least once a week. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I use a razor blade just to get the stuff off. Mm-hmm. You know, JJ, uh, really quick, Rob, Rob Walker, Robert Walker was a uh, program director of mine for a hot two years 
uh, at WKIS in Miami, and he was still. This is after he left radio for a Kiss while. Kiss country, yeah, sure. Kiss. And yeah. Um, this was after he left radio for a while and was I'm doing his. I'm surprised you and I didn't meet. I know it, it's it's I, weird. I was still there in '95, <laughs> but he. Well, that was right around. Oh yeah, that's when I d- first got there. But um, yeah. Rob Walker, I would see him doing spots, and he was doing exactly what you're talking about. I would watch him. He yep. was so animated. He's punching the air. He's doing all yep. this stuff, and I'm like, wow, he's into that. And yeah. he told me at that time, and this was probably around 2000, 2001, when I was just first starting to do car spots on the side. And he's like, you know, this really is kind of, you know, Rob Walker's so cool. He's like, this yes, really is, is kind of yes, acting, man. And he was saying it back then yeah. that doing these yeah. car mm-hmm. spots, it, it's still acting because you're not being yep. yourself. You're trying to convey a certain message and you're trying to get people to believe and understand that this is a really good deal. So, yeah. Right. 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 Even though it's not. <laughs> no, car, spot, car spots are tough. They're like the hardest, in my opinion, yes. genre out there. They are tough. I was in your market, too, um, Linda, for, um, you said Long Island, right? Yeah, Long Island. Long Island. Mm-hmm. It was uh, the Huntington <laughs> Group, and then they changed to the Empire Group. Oh, yeah, recently. Empire Group. Yeah. It oh, very cool. Did that for about a year up until... COVID. <laughs> Until COVID, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure. This has really been fun. It, you're right. It has. It has. It's I think really it's fantastic. Been fun. You guys have been on here. Um, Thank you. I want people to check out your podcast for sure. Middle Class VO Podcast. I think a lot of our students have already told us that they've been listening to your podcast. Oh, oh hello, phone. You, you want me to well, get that? Every time you say that, Linda, <laughs> it seems like I hear bells. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. from the bandsaw we accident. <laughs> Um, I think that you guys are going to start your own online workouts soonish. The date to be determined. Yeah, we'll but, be making um, those announcements. Um, we're going to call it the middle class. Oh, can I make them out. for you? Yeah, you know what? Um, I, I'm an announcer. You know, I've got a budget of four dollars ninety five cents. Are you in? <laughs> That's great. As long as it takes in you eight months to pay too. me. Yeah, in perpetuity. <laughs> and it, and I'll, I'll make it in eight monthly installments. Oh, that's excellent. And, and as they always say, it's only going to air on the World Wide Web. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, oh my okay, gosh. good. That, that makes it cheaper. <laughs> but we'll let you know. And, and you know, um, we would love to have you two back on our podcast, you know. Uh, How I, about tomorrow? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't work Saturdays, Jason. Saturday, no. I don't either. No. <laughs> right. We take a break. Unless somebody needs something, then I do. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's true. That's true. I'll say. Can you do this? Sure, sure, sure. That's fine. Yeah. It would be fun to come back on your show, too. Let's yes, do it. it. Would. Yes, it would. Talk about some okay. interesting things. But um, yeah, thanks again, guys. And uh, everybody else, remember, we have our workouts on Wednesdays. We are taking, well, by the time this airs, I always have to say that. By the time this airs, it will be in April. And I think there's only a few spots left for the workouts if anybody wants to join us because we have a good time. We did a mock audition. I might audition have nine one. fingers by then, so you never know. <laughs> we did a mock audition workout last week. Oh, Wednesday night? That was fun. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and bet. JJ and I actually probably learned more than the students did. Yeah. How many participants? Um, the first do you time have? we had to make a decision, it was like, we, oh, my God, this is hard. We max it. <laughs> We max out at six. This is after two years of tweaking and trying and, you know, yeah. um, six people. I don't people... tweak much anymore, though, man. <laughs> you don't. But um, <laughs> no. six people seems to be the comfortable level for us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we did just... seven one night. It was just like, wow. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Right. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was incredible to be on the other side of it, the casting side of it. Because then JJ and I had some big decisions to make. I was like, oh, my God, this is why it takes so long for these castings to happen. Yeah, Yeah. could you imagine? Um, Hundreds. Yeah. I can't. I I, I cannot. We were only dealing with six, you know. But it was uh, an awesome experience. But PayPal is a great thing for influencing, I'll tell you. PayPal? What? Yeah. What? Oh, you didn't get any cash during the (laughs) night? Oh, sorry. I, I do, but as a thing. coach, <laughs> not for something. No, no, no. I got them during the audition. <laughs> oh, I'm happy to hear that. Fantastic. JJ's going to handle the Wednesday night. <laughs> right. He is, I'm sure. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Everybody have um, you. a good rest of your day, night, evening, weekend. And if you need to reach out to us, you have questions, you have a topic you'd like us to discuss, please email info at voiceover.guru. Thank you, everybody. I think you put the accent on the goo. Guru. Okay, what's that on the road? <laughs> Ahead? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Enjoyed Thanks. it. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye now. Goodbye.